This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1360. Are your money beliefs holding you back? By Scott Spann with FinancialFinesse.com. Welcome to another Sunday edition of Optimal Finance Daily. I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the podcast where I read to you from some of the best blogs in the world, with their permission, of course. And if you like today's episode, you'll probably enjoy our other shows on topics like health, relationships, and personal development. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in your podcast app to find them. But for now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Are Your Money Beliefs Holding You Back? by Scott Spann with FinancialFinesse.com. If you're looking to improve your financial wellness, it's important that you're aware of the role your financial attitudes and beliefs have in shaping your future. These beliefs help explain key differences between savers, spenders, and the people who try to avoid money matters completely. They can be extremely stubborn, and are difficult to change since they can become part of our ongoing money script or life story that follows our financial behaviors. Financial wellness starts early in life. Doctors Brad and Ted Klontz use the term money scripts to describe financial beliefs that are often developed early in life and are frequently passed from one generation to the next. No matter where you are on the journey to reach your financial life goals, It's always helpful to be aware of your past experiences with money, whether they were positive or negative. Take a moment to answer these simple questions. What are some of your earliest money-related memories and experiences? Was money a frequent source of arguments or was the topic often avoided? What are your current money scripts or financial belief patterns? Four types of money beliefs. According to research performed by Dr. Brad Klontz and Dr. Sonia Britt, professors at Kansas State University, three out of four primary money beliefs, money avoidance, money status, and money worship are linked to potentially destructive financial behaviors. For example, these patterns of money beliefs have been associated with having lower levels of net worth, lower income, and higher amounts of revolving credit. The other money belief, money vigilance, was not linked to problematic financial behaviors. Do you identify with any of these money beliefs? In general, money avoiders tend to view money as negative and a source of fear, anxiety, or disgust. Often they have beliefs that wealthy individuals are greedy. Money avoiders think that they don't deserve money or that money is bad and the root of all evil. In addition, they also tend to believe that it's not okay to accumulate more wealth during your lifetime than you'll actually need. Money avoiders may experience conflicting beliefs that having more money and wealth could improve their life satisfaction, self-worth, and social status. This belief system can create a tug of war between feelings of contempt towards money and wealthy individuals to placing too much emphasis and value on the role of money during their life journey. Money worshipers believe that having more money will solve all their problems and money is the key to happiness. An associated money script is that things will get better in life if I just had more money. Another common belief is that the accumulation of more money will lead to increased happiness and overall life satisfaction. For the money worshiper, money is viewed as a scarce resource and there will never be enough of it. Money worshipers may prioritize work over family and social relationships. People with money status belief systems tend to define their self-worth by their financial net worth. They also place a great deal of emphasis on buying the hottest new items with leading brand names and quality. Money is a sign of success for those with strong money status beliefs. As a result, these individuals may pretend to possess more wealth than they actually have and may overspend to provide others with an impression that they've achieved financial success. Money vigilance is typically associated with themes of frugality, and people with these money beliefs tend to focus on the importance of saving, using discretion when discussing financial matters, and expressing anxiety about not having enough for emergencies. Money vigilant people are most likely to pay attention to their financial well-being. A common belief for the money vigilant is that people should work hard for their money and not expect financial handouts. 
They also tend to be more anxious and guarded when discussing money matters with people outside of their closest network of friends and family. Do your money beliefs support your life goals or are they creating a roadblock? Some of these money beliefs are not problematic. In many situations, they may even be encouraged. It's at the extremes where these money beliefs can cause problems. Money worship beliefs can lead to compulsive spending, work-life imbalances, and hoarding behaviors. These beliefs can also be associated with financial dependence, giving money to others they cannot afford to part with, and ignoring or not paying attention to one's own financial situation. Money status beliefs are associated with compulsive spending problems and being financially dependent on others. Money status beliefs may also lead to secret spending or financial infidelity. Money avoiders have trouble setting financial life goals and struggle sticking to a personal spending plan or budget. This money belief is also linked with overspending and compulsive buying. Not surprisingly, money avoiders have difficulty organizing financial statements and frequently struggle discussing money matters. Money vigilant beliefs can help provide wealth protection, but this watchful approach can also prevent you from enjoying the benefits of achieving a positive state of financial wellness. Are your money beliefs helping support your financial behaviors or are they creating roadblocks for your financial life plan? If you're having trouble following a budget, eliminating debt, or saving, your money scripts may be holding you back. You can take a quiz, which is the Klontz Money Script Inventory, if you want to complete your own self-assessment to examine your own money beliefs. It's never too late to rewrite your script. The good news is that you have the opportunity to rewrite these money scripts. While money beliefs can be passed on from one generation to another, they don't have to be permanent. Once you've identified your patterns of thinking about money, you can begin to examine how changing those beliefs can fundamentally improve your financial situation. Then you'll truly be ready to take mindful, deliberate steps to turning resolutions of change into reality. You just listened to the post titled, Are Your Money Beliefs Holding You Back? by Scott Spann with financialfinesse.com. It's serendipitous to read about Brad Klontz and money scripts this week because I just listened to him on the Crazy Money podcast, which I highly recommend, by the way. The host, Paul Ollinger, and his producer took the Klontz money script inventory quiz, and Brad analyzed the results in a pretty entertaining way. So if you're interested in this topic, I'd encourage you to check out that episode of Crazy Money. Now, I have to imagine if you're listening to Optimal Finance Daily, we must share some money vigilant beliefs, right? As someone who identifies with the FIRE movement, which stands for Financial Independence Retire Early, I feel like I've combined money vigilant scripts with a flipped around version of money status. I certainly am not discreet when discussing financial matters as the description we heard earlier for money vigilance suggests but I do think living way below my needs has become a bit of a status symbol for me. I'm super proud of the $6,000 car I paid for in cash. In fact, I have a bumper sticker on it that says my other vehicle is a 401k. I find myself more impressed with people who find innovative ways to be resourceful than I do with people who buy fancy things. But reading this article made me reflect on if I'm using my pursuit of fire and how much I can save as a reflection of my self-worth, which likely has the same psychological pitfalls as someone who uses spending for the same purpose. I probably shouldn't go diagnosing myself after one article, but it's an interesting concept to ponder. And that's another weekend edition of Optimal Finance Daily in the Books. Thanks so much for your support and for listening every day, of course. Have a great rest of your weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.